How can you run a highly profitable short-term rental? That's what I'm going to show you right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. I am James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV. I hope you stick around after you watch it. And if you really like what we do and you want to work with us directly, hit us up. Just give us your number. Send us an email with your contact info. We'll call you, talk to you, figure out what we can do for you, what your investment strategy is. Get some videos together for you like I'm doing for my man, Jeff. Jeff, you are the director of construction at a construction company down there in Temecula, California. Real estate is in your blood, brother. Right now, you're building a 111-unit apartment building for your company, right? So you're in this biz. You know what's going on. You want to uh, expand your holdings, get yourself a short-term rental. As I understand it, brother, you're doing a 1031. I think you said the property you're selling was one of your holdings in Vegas. And uh, you're going to have, between some savings and your 1031 funds, you're going to have like a little over 400 grand to work with, right? And what you did is you found a potential property, a luxury property in Ohio. And uh, that's the market my team runs property management in, right? North Northeast Ohio, right? We do construction, maintenance, insurance, which by the way, folks, we do insurance all throughout Ohio. So if you have a rental property anywhere in Ohio, sales at holdenwise.com or go to our website, click the insurance tab. We will give you a no obligation quote. I can almost guarantee you we will lower your insurance premium because all we do, all we do is landlord insurance. But back to the issue at hand, right? You sent me this property. You're thinking about buying it, turning it into a short-term rental, and having my company manage that asset for you. You want to know what the cash flow is going to be like, if it's a good deal, if it's a bad deal, this or that, right? So what I'm going to do for you now is I'm going to break down all the numbers, the experience, what I anticipate happening, how my team can manage it for you, all of that right after this. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Let's pull up this property and let's really do a deep dive on the numbers, man. That's what we got to do, folks. The first things first, the address, 28399 Pike Drive, Orange Village, 44022. It's been on the market for almost three weeks now. The price is 345 k Let's talk about the neighborhood first, Orange Village. It's like a really small little tiny village uh, right off of a, a, a city uh, that you would uh, more likely have heard of called Chagrin Falls. This is an A-grade neighborhood folks chagrin falls is where the elite in the northeast ohio area live right chagrin falls is as nice as it gets right same thing with orange village right they're kind of one in the same almost right orange village is a little right next to them but like they use some of the services city services of chagrin falls moral story it's nice it's where the wealthy live, right? If you check out the Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods, which I've linked in the show notes below and is also available on the Tools and Resources tab of HoltonWise.com, I graded every neighborhood A to F. F, what you're going to get with F, grade neighborhoods in the Cleveland area, folks, the lowest price is the highest risk. What you're going to get with A grade neighborhoods, the highest price is the lowest risk, right? That's how it works. Tit for tat, give take. My opinion not all real estate strategies are going to work in every type of neighborhood, right? Low-income rentals work better in, my opinion, the C and D neighborhoods. The best for out-of-state investors work pretty good for local investors who are really hands-on, okay? 
Uh, as far as short-term rentals, though, I wouldn't want to touch any of those neighborhoods as short-term rentals. Likewise, I wouldn't really want to buy this as a long-term buy and hold as an out-of-state or local investor because these are luxury neighborhoods where owner-occupants pretty much control the market, right? There really is no long-term rental market, right? People that move to Orange Village or Chagrin Falls don't typically rent. Now, turning it into a luxury short-term rental, though, I think that makes sense, right? Because when you get people who've moved out of the area, want to move come back, you know, to talk to grandma and grandpa, family reunions, things of that nature, right? What do they want? They want nice properties, luxurious properties. They want to have nice space. They don't want to deal with bad neighborhoods. That's why we target the highest quality properties in the highest quality neighborhoods. We want to get a premium price, right? We don't want to deal with the risks that come with your lower income neighborhoods, right? Like having uh, people coming and going, like, empty properties filled with furniture it doesn't seem like a good move in the higher risk neighborhoods but over here this property it's on a nice private two acre lot you got the big old detached garage and everything is done for you the pictures on the mls are not that great so sorry if they're a little blurry but this is what i've been given right already updated kitchen they got the stone under mount sink all stainless steel appliances like everything is great on this thing you do not need to do anything uh, to this property. It is turnkey, man. It is ready to rock. Beautiful hardwoods throughout. Like, it's it's looking fresh, man. We got a nice, large amount of space. This little office here, I'd probably put more beds in there, right? The more beds we put in this property, the more people we could sleep, the higher our daily rate is going to be. Beautiful, banging tile showers, right? People are going to see that. They're going to like it, right? It's going to be a nice vacation experience, man. Everything has been done, right? This is fairly luxury. Up here, dude, you slap a whole bunch of beds up here, man. You're going to be able to sleep quite a bit of people in this thing. And then, of course, we got the bar in the basement. That's where it's at. Another bath there in the basement. Cool little area to congregate. Maybe you could throw a nice little fire in there. Maybe even cook a pizza in there. I don't know. Looks pretty good, though, right? Pretty nice. As far as the price goes... 345 I think you're going to have to pay every bit of 345 You got to understand, you're competing with owner occupants when you try to buy these things, right? And I know we're investors, right? And like sometimes we get a little egotistical and we, you know, we go up to our sellers and like, here's my offer. I'm an investor, by the way, right? I get a lot of people to do that, thinking that's going to carry weight, bro. No. No, it's not going to carry no weight. That scares realtors. Realtors don't like to hear that. Realtors don't like to hear that you're an investor from out of town and you didn't even walk the house, right? They're going to work with what they're most comfortable with, right? A family who's already, like, walked the property is going to make them feel comfortable. They always kind of look at investors side-eyed, right? So we need to come in with an aggressive offer. Let's not... You know, pussyfoot around, dude. 345 is what they want. 345 is what we're going to get them because we're competing with local owner occupants, and that is what 99.9% .9 of the realtors who list properties like this are used to dealing with, right? Investor is a scary word to them sometimes, right? So 345 is what I think we should pay, right? As far as the rents go, I think our average rental stay should be around 400 a night. Okay, if we rented it every day, that'd be twelve thousand four hundred a month, or a hundred forty-eight k a year. That'd be sweet, but that's not likely, of course. In this market, historically, we're looking at a thirty-eight percent vacancy. Okay, so after you factor in your fixed and variable expenses, your vacancy, your cleaning, the fee you got to pay Holton Wise to make the whole thing work for you, because we are full service. We will do it all. We will be the host on all of the short-term rental platforms, the Airbnbs, the VRBOs, the whole thing. We will book the guests. We will take the calls. We will take the complaints. We will fix things. We will clean things. We do everything. You don't have to do anything other than pay your mortgage, right? So when it's all said and done, I believe that this should, on average, clear you just under 4500 a month, a little bit over fifty k a year. Now, the warmer months, we're probably going to see a higher level of occupancy. The colder months, are going to see a lower level of occupancy. But I think it should kind of pencil out to that. But you got to do a little bit to get to that, okay? 
You got three forty-five as your purchase price, but we gotta furnish the bad boy, right? We gotta get all them beds in there. We gotta get couches. We gotta get flat screen TVs. We gotta make things legit. So I think we'll drop twenty-five on that, right? So all in three seventy up front. You're looking at a down payment of eighty-six and a quarter plus another twenty-five for that furnishings. So you're looking at a full-on cash investment of one hundred eleven thousand two hundred fifty. The bank's going to kick in a quarter milli on the mortgage, 30-year fixed interest, low interest, the best financing in the game. All told, I believe this thing should pencil out to be around a 30%, 37% cash-on-cash cash return, right? If everything goes according to plan. Now, of course, this is real estate. There are no guarantees. Maybe we run into some issues. I mean, you guys all know. Or if you don't know, you should know with the short-term rentals. That's a very uh, volatile business in regards to the policies of every municipality out there right things are changing quick it's an emerging business a lot of these cities they didn't you know anticipate this in their codes so like you know things are changing airbnb suing cities cities are suing landlords the whole thing it gets a little wild right so you have to understand those risks are out there uh at holton wise we are not your attorney so we are not going to go out there and uh, give you legal advice. So you, of course, before you make any buying decisions, want to, you know, do your due diligence, talk to your legal team, talk to your attorney about making this investment if you're going to run into any issues on a legal basis. But that's another reason, folks, why I think if we're going to do short-term rentals, we got to do them in the A-grade neighborhoods. We got to hit the luxury properties, right? Here in Northeast Ohio, we can give you luxury properties for a fraction of what you'd be paying in California or New York or something like that, right? So if, you know, things are going great, you're running your short-term rental for three to five years, and then the city decides they're going to switch things up. They no longer want short-term rentals in there. They think they're, you know, with their interpretation of zoning laws, they think there's an issue. Well, guess what? We have acquired a premium asset in a premium neighborhood. Guess who buys these, right? The wealthy people in that neighborhood. You're probably going to, you know, jump on some good appreciation there. You simply sell it for top dollar to an owner-occupant, right? So the risks, in my opinion, are very, very low because our exit strategies, right, we have really clear and concise exit strategies right it's not like it's an apartment building where the only people you could sell it to are other investors right it's not like it's a duplex in a low-income neighborhood where you just got other investors who are only focused on the roi right you just provide a beautiful property in a beautiful neighborhood a place like this chagrin schools a rated school system people pay a premium for this right so i think deals like this make a lot of sense Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.